I want to talk to you briefly about uh, problems in the real world and how math and science are related. Uh, I, I originally titled this, uh, this presentation uh, Problems in Physics, but um, since at least our focus here in, in high school physics is about um, discovering relationships in the real world, I decided problems in the real world was more appropriate. Uh, so anyway, the purpose I have here is for talking to you about this relationship that we're going to have in physics uh, between uh, the science and, and the math. Um, and I think one thing that might be fairly informative is to think about what uh, a Venn diagram. We're all familiar with those. Uh, and, and when we look at Venn diagrams, I think typically we, we think of them like this, and then we think of this area in the middle where these two circles uh, have, have some commonality. Um, I think what we're going to find in, in physics is that the relationship is much more like this. There's much more that math and physics have in common than they do that they don't have in common. So there's this, this huge area in, in the middle um, that they share. And, and that's what I want to talk about here just for a little bit. All right, so if we look at this relationship, let's, let's sort of see how it works. Well, we start out with some real-world problem or, or event that, that said just something that we're interested in. It could be anything from football to, to uh, you know, how objects fall, what makes rockets go, what keeps airplanes up. Um, I mean, just all of the things that interest us. That To me, that's the exciting part about physics is, you know, the whole world is is our sandbox to play in. And and we get to, to choose the things that we're interested in that we want to look at. And so we, have, we find something that, that interests us. And so how do we study it? Well, you know, there, there's qualitative and quantitative ways to study things. You know, if you say something's big, well, the next question is, well, how big is it? So what we do in physics is we have to take this real world event or thing that we're interested in, and we try to turn it into some uh, kind of mathematical problem because then with mathematics, we have a logical way and, and a precise way to, uh, to approach the problem. Um, once we have a, a problem formulated, then we analyze it using algebra or later on calculus or whatever um, mathematical procedure we, we can come up with to, to look at the problem and hopefully find some kind of solution. And sometimes we think, well, this is the end. We, well, we, we, we found it, x equals 3. But, you know, in real life, you know, so what? So what x equals 3? Well, we have to interpret that answer to see what it tells us about the real world, about the solution we were looking for. I mean, the, the question that we had that was, was interesting. So that solution, we hope, addresses and informs us about the real world problem. So at least in physics, um, you know, there, there is a place for mathematics just for its own sake. Uh, but for the most part in physics, math is a tool that helps us understand real world problems. Now, something I want to point out before I stop this is, right or wrong, good or bad, for whatever reason, this is not the way that we approach math most of the time in our, in our high school and, and middle school math classes. Uh, we spend most of that time learning about our symbol sense and our computation skills, which are necessary. I mean, guys, we've got to know how to find the slope of a line. We've got to be able to find the, the area of, of an object or of a polygon. They're, they're all of the, we have to know how to rearrange equations uh, and solve for missing variables. Those computation skills are important. But that procedural knowledge that, that we gain so much of the time is, as I said, not an end unto itself in physics. Uh, we're, we're looking for this structural approach to physics where we, uh, where we formulate problems to inform us about the real world. And, and I hope that helps clear up some... Uh, some things about, uh, about the relationship that we're going to experience between math and physics. And uh, that's all for this session.